And hey, it is 8:30. Nova Scotia election results hangout. We have no bumper music because copyright issues on YouTube, but that's okay. Hey, this is a special uh, edition of the Friday Night Hangout from uh, AvoidingChores.com. And uh, for those who are local, this is the election night results. There's a whole bunch of places where you can get election night results. If you're on Twitter, there's a few hashtags going on right now. There's the uh, NS Poly, NS Votes, NS Elections 13, a whole bunch more. It's trending on uh, Twitter, Canada-wide. And uh, we decided to do just a quick recap. Uh, event and the only two that are interested in politics from avoiding chores is me and Todd. Todd the beard dude. Interested in politics and has two thumbs. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so what we decided to do here is a very informal thing. I uh, basically we have beer and uh, we're going to go over the results. I brought for the beer. I'll tell you, Todd. Three fields harvest. Get it? Excellent. Get it? Three, yes. Three fields. Yes. Three fields. Three Harvest. parties. Get it? Yes, I do. All right, what are you drinking? Well today? played, sir. Well played. <laughs> uh, anything special that you're drinking tonight, or it's a special beer, but it's not Nova Scotia. The uh, Dogfish Head 90 Minute IPA. Oh yeah, nice stuff. All right, so uh, let's uh, do something different. We're going to try to do some different stuff here on the Hangout, but uh, since polls closed at 8 o'clock local time, let's uh, go over some of the some of the news that we're seeing on Twitter. we got a whole, whole bunch of websites open, and, uh, of course, use this as a second screen. Uh, basically, we got uh, three polling stations that are still open until 8.30 or 9.30, which is two in Atlantic, uh, Halifax Atlantic and Pictou Center. So that's due to we heard a fire truck and a uh, car accident, which are kind of the two reasons why that those po those two poles are staying uh, open. So yeah. So actually, uh, Pictou I believe is closed at 8:30. So it'd just be the two in um, uh, Halifax Atlantic to be open. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the Halifax uh, live results map, and uh, this is uh, from the elections uh, website here, so I don't think uh, we're in trouble by showing this, but uh, you can see now there's the sea of red and uh, oh, sea of blue, which are um, coming through, and... Uh, we see basically uh, before the previous election result, we had a lot of NDP, the sea of orange that we've seen uh, a couple. Uh, but basically, this was a referendum on the NDP government, and we'll go through some of the links here. We had put on the Google Plus or on the avoidingchores.com event page uh, the uh, couple articles, and and basically, and what was coming up, Todd? Uh, what was coming up at the end was. Uh, some of the some of the reporters were saying, well, what did the NDP actually do wrong? And uh, and that's an interesting little comment here. And there's a, before we get to that, there was a great uh, news story that came out earlier a couple couple days ago, where a uh, political blogger posted on uh, Twitter his uh, ballot, his yeah. election ballot. Yeah. and got into trouble, got trolled by the Nova Scotia Elections Twitter account, and where uh, apparently he's, he's breaking the law by uh, taking a recording device to the polling station, up to $5,000. And uh, but, but seriously, Jim, everybody carries a cell phone, and what cell phone, you know, I guess there's still probably some older ones, probably 70% of the people that voted, maybe even higher, broke the law. I broke the law. Exactly. My cell phone was in my pocket when I was voting. Well, it, it's very interesting because since that article came out, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people are tweeting their ballots and, of course, having a little bit of fun with it there. So Some of those are hilarious. Oh, they're great. So basically people are saying, what's the big whoop? Wouldn't you want to show that you voted? Because we're tweeting. If everybody was tweeting or saying, I voted, have you voted? There's just one way to do it here. So, so what's the difference from the blogger 
I'm, I just want to know. I don't know the answer to this. But what's the difference between him tweeting his vote, the ballot, or going home and going on to his blog and saying, hey, I voted for, uh, I think he voted PC, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he voted yeah. PC. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I voted PC. I did a good thing, blah, blah, blah. What's, yeah. What's There's the absolutely diff? no difference I, other than we know exactly the name of the person who uh, who voted, So, which, which you know helps. Hmm. So yeah, he's yeah, obviously it's, proud. So exactly, and he has some actually very good reasons, and we'll probably get into that a little bit here. So what we want to do is maybe go over uh, because if I were to gauge the response from the old lady at the NSLC tonight before the hangout, uh, the sea of red will take over, and uh, as I said earlier, it's a referendum on the NDP, but really, and they would be the first one-term provincial government in Nova Scotia since a long, long time. I think I read 130 years. Yeah, a long time. So most governments go for a couple terms, so this is, and, and they might get spanked really hard. So oh, we'll, so, sorry, I think I confused that. I think I'm thinking about the leader, the only uh, leader of a party in power. wish I could remember where I read that. Um, anyway, I think it was... If Dexter doesn't win his seat, which I guess I'm hearing might happen, mm -hmm. um, he'll be the first leader in 130 years that didn't win a second term, even if their party didn't return. Uh, it's it's going to be scary. So we'll go to the election screen results, live results in a bit, but we just want to go through the uh, contrarian. In the contrarian blog, the political reporter that posted the tweet, he, he actually has some very good articles here. But he did a series where, and he came with, what some of the other reporters were saying is that, well, what actually did the NDP did wrong? So we'll go through quickly six things that the NDP did wrong, and uh, we can comment on that or skip through. So basically, first thing that, they, that this blog post says that the NDP did wrong was the expense scandal. If we, that was way back in the first term four years ago where uh, a lot of MPs were views in the system, much like how the, the Senate was, right? Yep. And the NDP was right in the middle of it because they had just as many people with their lavish accounts. And uh, now, of course, we had a few uh, MPs or MLAs that uh, went to jail or, or went through some, uh, got charged and stuff like that, like Trevor Zink. But, uh, you know, they didn't handle the situation well. I believe uh, Premier Dexter was hiding out in South Carolina playing golf while everything was exploding around well, him. Premier Dexter got spanked, too. He put in claimed, uh, I think, for legal, like his legal uh, society fees or something, and got caught, and he said, oh, sorry, and he paid it back. So Yeah, he claimed, yeah, they found about $16,000. And Dexter had to repay over seven thousand of that. Now that's quite a bit of chunk of change. Well, his money wasn't entitled to. When they overpay me at work, I got to pay it back. Exactly. That's nothing to do with me putting any kind of false expense claims in. Yeah. If I put a false expense, if I put a false expense claim in, guess what happens to Mr. Dragonfly Hiker? Yeah. He's looking for a new job. Exactly. These guys. Oh, sorry. You know it's. It, kind of disillusions people, or me anyway. And, and I think that started the trend of disillusionment. People were expecting change, expecting the orange wave, and what we end up getting was a very close conservative government again, right? Yeah, well, Premier Dexter's brand is definitely... I'm, I'm as, you, as you know, Jim, I'm very uh, left-leaning socialist. I, I'm an anti-poverty advocate and uh, um, housing advocate. Mm -hmm. So NDP is a good fit for me, but P Premier Dexter's brand of uh, he's more conservative than probably yeah, Jamie it, Bailey, like exactly. Least. And I think personally, that's going to hurt them. Yeah, and uh, on my side, I'm more, I guess you call a social conservative. So uh, the closest thing that you could compare me to a few, about ten years ago, when they didn't do some cra crazy stuff, was the Bloc Québécois, where you know they, you know they, they had a, a lot of things that were good on their platform, except for one big thing that uh, didn't. But you know, so I'm kind of I lean back and forth a little bit. So, but uh, that's one thing. The other thing that uh, they talked about 
uh, the, what the NDP did wrong was their central command and control, uh, where they talk about the premier's office and, or the one government, uh, basically where you had uh, the micromanaged by a few few of the civil servants there, the premier's office there. Um, and also the, that, that falls into the whole communication of Scotia and the ship starts here and all this other, you know, using uh, communication of Scotia to to do the work uh, for the party instead of uh, yeah. for government, right? Yeah, but I think we're just following a trend of every other government, at least in North America, if not the world, that the ruling party gets to control the information. And, of course, they want to make themselves look good. You know, you look at, uh, federally, all that money that they gave out for community development. Yeah. All the, they all had to buy a $500 sign saying, look what the conservatives gave us and put it on the project site. So, And that was from the money that they got. <laughs> you know, they gave them 10000 They got to turn around and get 500 back to buy a sign. So I guess that's a small expense in the whole scheme of things, but it's 500 that could have gone into the project as opposed to advertising. Exactly. All right, we got Keith jumping in tonight. Keith, how's it going, buddy? Oh, all right, all right. All hey, right he's so got a red shirt on. You got a blue shirt. Yeah. I got oh, a green, green shirt. Hey. Where's the orange shirt? <laughs> we'll have uh, to, no hey, wardrobe so, changes for me. No. Well, uh, for people who don't know uh, what's going on tonight, this is a special Nova Scotia elections uh, result night. So a few of us here that are interested about uh, politics will be um, talking about that. And uh, we're just going over the six things that the NDP did wrong or right. But let's do a quick view at the live results uh, on the our, on our big screen, the uh, and which is a whole bunch of red now starting to come up. So let me bring that up. Yeah, a couple of browns popped into there. Yeah, liberals are leading or elected in 24 uh, seats, NDP 7, uh, PC 8. And this page refreshes every 20, se uh, 20 uh, seconds. Let me click on the button that shows elected. And what do we got? I don't think you really... Nope. Oh, no, no decisions nope, yet. Nobody's yet, no. Nope. All, all up. So... Uh, that was one of the things, and uh, there was a great screen capture. And just to show the difference, um, I'll, and I'll bring this up on the screen here, uh, as, as we talk about the next point, one of the things that NDP did wrong from the contrarian political blog, that's the blogger who took a picture of his ballot and getting into a whole bunch of trouble with uh, NS elections, is, and Keith is good that Keith has jumped in here, Tone death to rural Nova Scotia. The NDP got in, didn't understand rural Nova Scotia being a Halifax mostly party. Uh, and uh, doing a whole bunch of decisions that just didn't make any sense uh, for the rural uh, area. Keith, uh, do you have, since you jumped here, do you have a two cents on that while I bring up a, a different map? Um, historically, I do think that the NDP has not had their pulse on uh, what's going on in rural Nova Scotia. And uh, I don't know, I, th I think that'll be reflected here in, uh, in the voting results. I really do. I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I have that feeling uh, that it won't you be the NDP again here. They did try to decentralize the government somewhat, moving it to smaller areas <laughs> like tourism going to Windsor. Yeah, fisheries and, and justice. Don't justice you think that backfired on them, though? What's that? Don't you think that backfired on them, though? Yeah, it turned out to be a debacle, but they yeah. tried. They well, tried. The pro well, the problem is, is that they. Uh, the, the problem was, they decided to just take all these people who, let's face it, government. They have a lot of lifers in there, and especially in these departments where they have people who have spent almost a generation in that job. All of a sudden, hey, guess what? Pack up your stuff and move three yeah. hours into the country. Yeah. For your job, and right? They could have handled it differently. They could have put uh, alternation well, into effect. It's, okay, we've got a clerk over here in, um, I don't know, the liquor well, corporation or something, right? Especially since uh, provincial government, there's, there's a high rate of retirement 
So the turnover rate naturally would have occurred all by itself. So I yeah. just slowly start adding positions at that office instead of moving the whole thing over. Yeah. So what we saw, and that's covered in Frank Magazine and the Coast and all that, is that the actual percentage of people from tourism, justice, fisheries that went and moved to these rural um, places was 10%, if not lower. So now they have to spend all that time replacing these people into other departments who are grumpy and you know hate their jobs, <laughs> hate the government. Hey, right? I'm not. I don't work for the provincial government. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then basically restaffing these positions, which from tourism, for example, they're all being restaffed by people from Halifax. So you know what? It was. It's just a big old mess. They could have done it a little bit better, but. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't thought through, yeah, exactly. No, it wasn't yeah. thought through. Good idea. I do support the idea. Like, of course, obviously agriculture being based in Truro, fisheries mm -hmm. in Shelburne, and, you know, it was, it was a great idea, but it was implemented totally wrong. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Why well, do it in 12 months? Like, like you say, they could have did it over maybe, you know, five or ten years, but... Oh, exactly. And and allow people to swap positions. Maybe a clerk, mm -hmm. like I say, maybe a clerk that's getting shipped to Shelburne, she's from Truro, she'd like to go back to Truro. Could yeah, she, actually, you know, the, allow for that? I don't know if that was actually in place. I mean, they did allow that. and I know somebody switched departments because they're from here and they wanted to work out of Truro instead of Halifax. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, that's what mm -hmm. it was, right? You had a lot of uh, displacement, and that kind of mm -hmm. put a whole wrench into a lot of positions across government because you had to fit people around. And what happens when you have all these managers who don't want to go to Truro or Shelburne or yeah. Cornwallis there, right? I have zero sympathy for managers. Screw oh. screw. Well, Your all right, so let's, there. <laughs> let's show – I'm going to show on the screen here uh, the uh, – what we mean by how uh, rural Nova – NDP didn't understand rural Nova Scotia. So at the end of the last election, we had this amount of yellow or orange, the orange wave, and uh, which took – uh, control a lot of the South Shore, a lot of the Eastern Shore, mainland, and a little bit uh, on the coastal region. So that was last election, and let's flip over to the new, the live results, how that is changing. So all these gains are, are eroding away. Uh, you know, there's really not too many uh, bits and pieces that are orange at this point in the election. We're about an, almost an hour in here. So... Uh, and, and a lot of that has to do with that perception that they don't quite, they didn't quite understand the rule. Another thing, so the next item, which what NDP did wrong, was not dealing good with big companies, negotiating uh, with big companies, getting taken to the cleaners, giving millions and millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions to Bowater Mersey, to Irving, to Stern, to... Daewoo to, hang on, let me scroll down here because there's a lot more here. IBM, RIM, like the list goes on and on. It seemed like a rookie mistake, really. Like, I'm not excusing it, but it just seemed no, like no. they, sh they should have, you know. They were trying to play the game that every other province and state are playing. Yeah. But, but now is the worst time of all to be playing it. Yeah, but unfortunately they were trying to go after industries that are dead. Forestry, as much as we like the jobs yeah. and the tax revenue and things, it's a dead industry. You can see yeah. it right across the country. Like oh, yeah. it, It's in the news all across the states. All these plants are high. Well, one thing against us in Nova Scotia, they're high electricity users. And being the highest electricity rates in the country, you know, there's your operating costs through the roof. You know, well, even if you... Yeah, even if you save a little bit on uh, labor. Well, I mean, all these these breaks, sometimes they get them cuts on power rates and they pump a little bit of money into them. All it is is a dead cat bounce. I mean, they, they find a new client, they're good for a year, or yeah. maybe two if they're, at most, and then they're done. Yeah. It just, it just prolongs the inevitable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you look at the Liverpool, Liverpool situation, the Bowwater Mersey now, you know, they... They had to. They couldn't find any buyers for this pulp mill or plant or this building. So now it's this this test bed for anybody who wants to do the high tech fiber research. You know, come down to Liverpool and. I think that was the real kick in the pants. Is they gave them a few million. Fifty million. Fifty million. They turned around and gave their executives bonuses and closed it. 
So basically, uh, my my tax money went to give an executive a bonus. And turn around and, and shut things down afterwards. So but that why was dirty. That was why dirty. Is there, why is there nothing in place to say you can't do that? Yeah, well, they should go to jail. That's yeah. fraud. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a it's basically yeah it's it's a form of uh, <laughs> embezzlement really. Ah. Oh. So, so, yeah, so maybe, you know, whoever is the next party that gets elected tonight, hire big city lawyers, negotiators, professionals. Don't, don't get Buddy from Acadia, fresh out of school, to negotiate against these big companies because we're going to get taken to the cleaners. So we need... We that, need that's, their, that's their business. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, getting a big company to come is good. You know, the hoopla and the prestige and tons of jobs and everything, tax revenue. But I'd sooner see this half a billion dollars that we spent go into small businesses, helping them improve. You know, a small business trying to improve their infrastructure, their building, their gear, their equipment, training. Small. Small businesses are a lot less apt to pull up stakes and leave, really. You know, oh, not, yeah. it doesn't no. work that way. Well, well, Keith, it's hard to pull up stakes in a quarry and move it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not saying all big businesses are bad that way, but they have to, you know, they have to look at each company and not just throw money at it and hope it sticks. Like, is, the, is there a future yeah. in this? Are they yeah. going to stay? A lot of them are multinational companies. They don't yeah. care. Oh, yeah. And, and, this, and the same thing is, like, you know, what do you do? Like, you know, they pulled uh, funding for the ferry at Yarmouth. We all saw what that did to the whole region in terms of revenue and business yeah. and, and, and momentum. But they uh, pulled money from the Yarmouth ferry, but they bumped up the Dar or the Digby one, didn't they? Didn't they throw money at that? Uh, no, not – or just a little, just enough to, for it to survive. But they had partnering. They had feds, I think, they put in some money too. Uh, but you know when you when it came time to Port Hawkesbury, the wood mill there, they put in a lot of money there because there's a lot of factors going on there, right? You know, you t you're thinking about the whole region, and then you go about the trickle down employees, truck drivers, mechanics, heavy equipment operators, all this stuff down the line. Uh, you think about environmental mess that's at the plant, so it was worthwhile putting money in to let it run until they can find a buyer. So, you know, maybe they learn from Yarmouth that, you know, maybe you shouldn't pull the money out right away on some of these industries. So it was kind of yeah. interesting. You know, don't blame them because, you know, you, you, when you start doing the math, you know, when they saw, you know, obviously, you know, I'm sure they saw some pictures of, you know, some employment numbers from Yarmouth after they pulled the subsidy for ferry and thinking Port Hawkesbury and they applied the formula. It's like, oh, crap, you got a well, couple thousand here to deal with. Even as far as Grand Pre, now Grand Pre is uh, probably about two hours from Yarmouth. Yeah. There's an an, there's an antique there's an antique store near Grand Pre. When the ferry stopped working, his sales dropped eighty percent, eight zero percent. Well, I'm sure a lot of people so, did the circuit up through the valley, down through Halifax. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. So we're not just talking about Yarmouth. You're talking about the whole loop. You're talking from. Yarmouth to Halifax, Georgia. through the valley, and down the South Shore. And uh, and I've been to Yarmouth. I was to, in Yarmouth the last week of August. It's bad down there. It's uh, bad. It's, it's bad. I, mean, I mean, they talk about it. It's subsidizing. You know, they talk about subsidizing the ferries, and you can't subsidize everything, but no, it's a lot cheaper than what they're going to have to do to keep these areas alive. Yeah. Now, um, it's good... You know, kudos for, for them, and we'll get into the, the things that they, they've done right. Uh, you know, at least they, they try to get it back. And I think now, after a few years, people acknowledge that it was the wrong boat, the wrong business. It wasn't, it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't the right model for, for, for the time. So, yeah. All right, so this is a special edition of the Friday Night Hangout. This is Nova Scotia Elections Result Hangout. If you're in Nova Scotia, we're going through the live uh, results as they come in, and we're discussing about some of the things that the NDP did wrong, did right. A look on uh, the screen here. We're looking at the live results right now from the Nova Scotia elections website. Sea of red, sea of blue. Uh, so, J now? Jim, what's the uh, two bottom thing, or what's the three out? Yeah, the three uh, call-outs. Uh, one of them, uh, the top left is Cape Breton, the Sydney and okay. Lewisburg area. 
And uh, down at the bottom is uh, HRM in Peninsula Halifax. So okay. So maybe we can go into some of the actually you know let's let's start to dive in into Halifax here. Uh, let's get to uh, because there's a few of these writings that we are interested in. Um, so let's go to Clayton Park West, which I think which is your writing, Todd. That's right. Uh, results not yeah. available. What? What? The uh, those friggin' well, Clayton Park those... West. The result they're having a uh, polls reported here. Here I see. Uh, let's see. Let's do uh, Halifax Shabukto. What? No maybe they results. haven't. Maybe they haven't got it drilled down enough. Well, I, I, no, I it see the polls reported though. I'm getting men in, in my end. Yeah, no, I'm seeing them too. Uh, there, it was working before. It was working before we actually started the hangout. Um, oh, we get to yeah. see the candidate there. So I'd be interested right. to see uh, Dartmouth Coal Harbor. Yeah, well, as we see here on the map, Dartmouth Coal Harbor, which is all red, right? Dartmouth Coal Harbor, right here, Eastern Passage, everything's red, sea of red in Halifax, except for Fairview, Clayton Park, which is undecided right now. Well, there's in, in Clay, uh, Fairview, Clayton Park, there's Gregor Ash, which I think that's it. No, sorry, that's, uh, no, it's... Um, a, ba a bad con. Uh, so let's. I think he put up quite a quite a good battle down there. Let's take a look here at uh, the elected. See if there's any elected writings right now that uh, they they've called. Uh, oh, well, they haven't called anybody yet. So we got uh, 47 or 51 dis electoral districts reporting. They haven't maybe called. Maybe they're maybe they're holding off till that final polling uh, place closes in uh, about four or five minutes. Uh, until, until they start, just for fairness, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Now, the reason why the, the screen's flickering because the page refreshes every 20 seconds, but we can see here Liberals are leading 30 seats, NDP 7 from uh, their majority, and PCs down to uh, 10, which I think was the same seats that they had before. Um, I, I think they had, at dissolution, there was 52 seats. Of course, now there's 51. They did some rejiggering. Yeah. They made my riding smaller because uh, it was the most populous riding in Nova Scotia, so they split it up a bit. But I think it was... Uh, I think they had less than 10, didn't they, the PC party? Yeah, maybe 7 or something. I can't remember. Yes. I don't... Look, let's face it, PCs, they, you know, as much as we like to blame the NDP, NDP got in at a really bad time in terms of the global economy, PCs making a nice mess of things uh, to begin with, so uh, they're, not, they're not ready. They need a few more cycles to uh, penance, I think, uh, to get back into power, so... Right. I was going around telling people to vote for me for the uh, just a write-in candidate for the marijuana party, yeah. but I don't know if anybody will do it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, we're, what we're doing right now is we're reviewing the contrarian uh, blog post from a little while ago on the six things the NDP did wrong, and now we're going to do the six things the NDP did right. Contrarian is the political blogger that uh, took a photo of his ballot and then got trolled by. NS elections on Twitter, and he might be up for five thousand dollar fine because of that. Uh, okay, so what did NDP did right? The reason why we're going to do what they did wrong, what they did right, is that a lot of reporters said, or you know, the panelists uh, or pundits said, well, really, they, what did they actually do wrong? You know, they did a lot of rookie mistakes, which I think a lot of first-time governments will do. Uh, but look at what they did right. First thing is a balanced budget. They did a real effort to try to balance the budget. Now, they had to go back on one of their promises and raise the HST by 2%, which is one of the things that got stuck people in the craw of, of you know, upping taxes first year. But they know, really yeah. tried to, to, to balance things. Yep. So. Cut education, $120 million. Uh you know, provincial government have been uh, cutting, uh, making departments cut their budgets for between five and ten percent for the last three years. 
uh, not refilling positions of uh, people who are retiring or anything like that. So uh, there's fewer civil servants in government. Moving people out to rural areas, not refilling the positions quite right away. So, you know, they're getting their highest credit ratings. So, you know, they they are, you know, they, they're, they're trying to do, they're doing very conservative fiscal management. Well, this in this kind of economy, you know. Well, that's, that's just it, go. right? You know, like, like they got in at a really wrong time. PCs really did a big mess, so... Uh, another thing that they did right from this blog here was the collaborative emergency care centers, which I'm really not too too familiar with. Um, they're they're here. There's like one in Pug, Washington, Adamish, Okay. Basically. Uh, now they say now the blogger here says contrarian says that trimming the education budget was a right thing to do. Yeah. It was get, really getting rid of a lot of the middle management. All the people well, make. Hundred grand and not really doing them much. Anyway, yeah, they need to get rid of the school boards. That's one of my biggest cross. So well, school boards. We've talked. Yeah. We've talked about that before, and we talked about how you know there was eight people on the school board, and then they they fired everybody and had one person do the job for the rest of the year. Yeah, here in Halifax. And do and do it well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That says a lot in itself, really. There's a lot of things in Nova Scotia. The Election Act being one of them is kind of outdated and needs overhaul, but we kind of just do things like we did in the 50s. We just keep doing it over and over because that's the way that's, we did it. That's a Nova Scotia thing for sure. Yeah. In more ways than one. <laughs> and the last two things uh, about what the NDP did right here, which I don't quite agree with, was the uh, highway plan and the maritime link. Uh, highway plan was here. Hang on, a sec. Uh, basically, a better plan for the highway infrastructure. Uh, for highway bridge maintenance and construction. Um, whatever. Hmm. Not too yeah, I don't, I don't agree with the link either. Yeah, the maritime link. Well, I don't know if it's right. Yeah, we do need to do something about the power situation. How much? How many, what what is the percentage of our power rates that went up in the last four years? 20, 30 percent? Something like that, yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, businesses can't afford more power increase. Uh, Keith, you're a small business. You use electricity for your saws and stuff like that. That might that that must cut into the bottom line, right? Oh, um, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, Everything everything gets into the bottom line, but then at the end of the day, prices have to go up. Mm. I mean, that's... I really like the idea of opening things up, and if somebody wants to put a wind farm to power a community, then darn it, they should be able to offer... Well, well that's what we should be focusing on, you know, more than more than these, yeah. mega, pro these mega projects. Well... Look how long, look how they don't last, or look at the maintenance it costs. Yeah. Look at Mactaquack in the news lately. That was supposed to last 100 years. Yeah. And now <laughs> we're going to have big problems. Point yeah. LaPro. Point LaPro, that's. Yeah. That's always, you know, something to fix. I don't know. It's definitely, uh, definitely a problem here. So. All right, so it's the election night recap. We're just going over some uh, some of the stuff here. We're we're going over uh, blog posts. Uh, we're going over Twitter, seeing if there's anything going on here. CBC says that it's going to be a liberal. Of course, they look at the map, and of course they'll call it liberal. But yeah. Whoever can call it first, that's the big thing about the media. Well, yeah, exactly. But we're the added. We're the added value for people tonight. We're the yeah. uh, we go behind the scenes. We're that behind the scenes raisins at the bottom of the box of raisin bran. Oh, exactly. We didn't we didn't bother starting at eight. We started at eight thirty. We waited. We got some results in so that at least we can give uh, our feedback. But obviously, from the map, he's like, well, yeah, of course. Uh, but then again, I don't know. I'm seeing as much blue as red here. Well, they're going for the big ridings. Yeah. Look at all those little tiny ones in Halifax. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you look at, uh, what is that, Inverness? That's huge. NDP's leading in uh, Cape Breton. I'd be interested Cape Breton Centre and uh, Sydney Whitney Pier. I'd be Thanks. interested to see what happens here because since 1949, the PCs have been in power all but 12 or 14 years. Now, you, 
your Cumberland North. Yep, it used to be Cumberland East before '93. And but, of course, uh, there's no there's no results here. So, but yeah, right now the Liberals are ahead there. So. And do we have any elected? Probably not. not. No, no, not yet. So it is well, you know. Let's take a look at the Hal again. The Halifax one's all liberal except for Halifax Atlantic, and uh, let's take a look at Halifax Atlantic, which is uh, Brendan uh, McGuire, Tannis Crosby, and Ryan Brennan are the candidates uh, for that, and that is the Sambro uh, Purcell's Cove area. Anything? I don't know. Is there, is there anything about that writing that kind of sticks out to us here? Or? Well, the only thing I really know about that riding is um, the uh, the whole Purcell's Cove sewer extension. Yeah. I don't know if you've been following that in the news. That's big news down there, and I don't know if they're blaming any particular. It's a municipal thing, but, you know, somehow it always seems to spill over into provincial. Yeah, you didn't yeah. support us, or you didn't voice your... You know, you didn't well, come the, out and... Well, the, one of the things I read is that they're, you know, they're pl they want to put some more subdivisions, but right now, traffic uh, would... Uh, there's already a big traffic backlog in the mornings to get into downtown Halifax. Yeah. And their wait time would have to double uh, from that. So people don't want more people living down that road, which makes sense, right? Right, so Global's showing elected and leading in all 51 ridings now, so Liberals 34, PC's 10, and NDP 7. Well, a little bit different from what uh, we're seeing here on the uh, NS elections uh, map. And, and it's, a close, uh, it's a close fight in a Sackville Beaver Bank, too. If you look there, it's... It's still close. Well, you know what? Let's. Uh, I think now the uh, the map is working in terms of uh, elections here. So let's take a look at Dartmouth uh, Coal Harbor. Was it Dartmouth South? Uh, well, which one is uh, Dexter? Dexter. I believe it's Dartmouth Coal Harbor. Dartmouth Coal Harbor, and that is which one's that? It would be, uh, I think you're too far Dartmouth north. South? No. No, hang on. Maybe it's on the big map. Is it? Let's call Jocelyn. That's his writing. <laughs> Waverly. Oh, what was that? All right, I'm, I'm looking closer. here. Dartmouth South, Dartmouth South. Coal Harbor. Yeah, Coal Harbor, Portland Valley. Coal Harbor, Portland Valley. Which is that one. And yikes, Daryl Dexter in danger of losing his seat. Coal Harbor, oh. home of Sidney Crosby. Yeah. Only twenty four fifty five, so still, still lots to uh, lots to lots, count. So lots to go. Yep, but not looking good. No, not looking good at all. Uh, let's look at the other uh, writings for the other leaders here. Um, Stephen McNeil is in, I believe, he's in Annapolis, and uh, he's doing uh, pretty good. Very good. Right Bill now he's doing very well. As also. Yeah, he's doing good. Percent of voter turnout, 33%. Is that right? Hopefully that's what that's counted so far. Yeah, that's the other thing I guess will be interesting to see uh, what the turnout is this time. Yeah. So uh, now Jamie Bailey, he might be under uh, – he might not be able to win his, uh, his seat. Gee, is he at Colchester uh, North? He's in, uh, he's in Cumberland, Cumberland South. South. He's, uh, he's leading by about 300. 19 Which, out of 38 polls reported. And he's still got uh, he's still got a ways to go. Still, still got a ways to go. Yeah. Still got a ways to go. And uh, you know, okay, so let's take a look now at our individual writings. Keith, you're Cumberland North. Yep. 
And uh, looks like uh, well, liberals, still tight. Liberals are ahead. Yep. Liberals PC might go back. Now your area is traditionally uh, PC, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. This last time it was NDP. Before that, Fage was in power for quite a while. The last two years, he sat as an independent. Um, oh, that's right. Yes. He was in power from '97 until until four years ago. Before that, it was uh, Ross Bragg, and before that, there was about uh, 40 years of uh, progressive conservatives. I don't know mm -hmm. if anybody remembers Roger Bacon, but he was around for a long time. Right. Now, uh, Frank Magazine says that uh, who should win would be the NDP candidate, Brian uh, Skabar, uh, but who will probably win will be uh, Judy from the PCs, but it doesn't look like it right now, though. Uh, mm -hmm. No, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Judith uh, Giroux, uh, which is the Amherst Wise Men's Club uh, constituent assistant, and uh, Terry Falwell uh, is the is the Amherst uh, lawyer uh, for that. So that's uh, interesting little writing there. Uh, Todd, let's go to your writing. Which is Clayton Park West. Yep. You did some work for the Liberal, Diana Wallen. Yeah, I could say that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, no surprise there. She's extremely popular. Uh, I'm going to call this one. 4351, yeah. I'm going to call it for Diana. Congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's in the bank, as we say. Yeah, no surprise right. there. She was getting 70% of the. Uh, Polls like the pre-election polls. So, but she. You know, sorry. No, no. I was gonna say like you know I was in your writing for a couple of years when we first moved to Halifax, and she's been a consistent figure in the community there. So yeah, I extremely, got nothing bad to say about it. Extremely her. popular, very supportive of the community. Uh, that's one thing you know. You talk to anybody, everybody knows her, everybody's seen her. It's like, oh yes, she's been at my kid's school. Or she's been at soccer, or she's been here, there, you know, old old lady tees, and she gets, you know, and she's uh, when our scouts went away to uh, the jamboree this year, yeah. she uh, she was very supportive uh, for us to go. So mm. uh, wanted to check to check um, is it Halifax Irondale which one's Drew running in yeah well we're gonna get to those two other two here in a bit and show my writing of Bedford uh, oh. Kelly Regan another uh, another, another very popular yeah. yeah landslide for this one here so uh, but she's been doing pretty good since uh, since she got in the last election working pretty hard in Bedford we see her and her husband uh, Jeff Regan the MP uh, a lot. Uh, Jeff Runt is an avid runner, so we see him on the Bedford Highway. Oh, is he? Quite, okay. Oh, yeah, quite a bit. So, yeah, he's in shape. Um, but, yeah, everybody can see uh, the other one would be the NDP candidate, Mike Porozowski, or Poroznik. Uh, I have trouble with these names. Um, he is, by Frank Magazine's view, probably the nicest guy you ever meet. He owns the Bedford Eye Care Clinic, uh, but unfortunately, uh, not a big uh, visibility because, uh, Todd, we mentioned this before, a lot of MVP candidates weren't the, the seat. They didn't have any candidates for a lot of the uh, writings when the election was called. When the election right? was called. Yeah, that was, I mean, wouldn't they know? <laughs> that, oh, yeah. that surprised me. Well, I think you see me mention on Twitter. I was surprised that there was only Dinah Whalen, the incumbent, in my riding yeah. when the election was called. It took, uh, I think, a couple of days for the PC guy uh, Jamie uh, Allen to come, and then a couple of days after that, uh, the NDP guy, who's doing pretty well actually. I was looking at his. Yeah. Uh, he's in second place. So. Yeah, you know, you know I understand PC now. There's no reason why NDP didn't have 51 candidates in every riding, even the the handful that they didn't have, which was, you know, less than 20. But you know, like you know, liberal and PCs would have the full field. But still, you see some writings where they parachuted candidates in. So we'll take a look here in a bit. But anyway, NDP is one of them. 
Uh, I just saw a tweet on Twitter. A tweet on Twitter. Uh, 131 years since Nova Scotian has allowed a government only one term. Lesson learned. Orange, orange is best on a pumpkin, not a government. Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, News ninety five seven says I could, we could be looking at a, a majority liberal government. I'm glad it's majority. I don't care really which. Well, I do care what party it is, but minority governments just don't get anything done. Um, looks like Diana Whalen is uh, starting her victory speech right now. That uh, Brent uh, from Global is saying. Uh, Global is saying that Liberals will win a majority government at this point, but as we saw in a couple of the key writings here, there's still a lot of still a lot of votes to be counted. Uh, there still could be uh, some room to. So what? Twenty six for a majority, right? So. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. It's fifty one seats. News, uh, News ninety five seven is reporting Liberals have taken Hammonds Plains, Lucasville, and Dartmouth South. And the Eastern Shore too. Okay, well, we're going to talk about the Hammonds Plains one here, but let's talk. Let's look at uh, the Halifax. A uh, couple of the Halifax writings. Halifax Shabukto, uh, where um, which is interesting race. Uh, one of the supporters of uh, well, one of the places we like, uh, which is the Trail Shop local business outdoor outfitter. The owner, Joachim uh, Stronik. Congratulations, Joachim. Looks like and he Yoko. had a strong fight against Gregor Ash. Like he's a very popular guy in around Halifax. So. Yeah. And uh, you know that's that's downtown Halifax, pretty much, right? That's just above the student yeah. ghetto. <laughs> yeah, West End. You know, yeah. very affluent area. Yeah. So that's a good, good, uh, good thing. Unfortunately, the PCs, uh, Yonik, uh, Yoakum, uh, went to visit. Uh, her uh, campaign center, and the, he tweeted a pic. She looked scared. She looked like she didn't. Uh, she knew what time it was. Didn't think it was gonna end well for her. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, look very good. Looks like uh, Yokum got a nice lead. Still got mm -hmm. uh, a few more writings to go, but uh, looks pretty good. Uh, the other Halifax one that that we're interested in is uh, Halifax uh, Armdale. Uh, Armdale, because uh, that is uh, Drew's writing. Jillian, uh, who uh, from local traveler that jumps in with us once in a while, her husband decided to throw his hat in. Uh, that's surprising. Liberal. He's doing good. Uh, now let me take a look here. Uh, from uh, if I look at. If I look at uh, what Frank Magazine has to say here, now this is a new writing. It encompasses uh, Fairmount, Armdale, and Cowie Hill. Uh, it's uh, for the liberals. We got ultra rich lawyer Lena Diab, uh, daughter of noted Halifax landlord Stephen uh, Mitledge. If buying votes were still allowed, she'd be golden. So says Frank Magazine. Uh, New Glasgow native uh, teacher Drew is runs from the uh, is running for the NDP, and uh, Irvine Carvey for the PCs uh, has been taking up space in the public sphere for years. Hasn't done anything of note that Frank is aware of. I think that the vague uses vibe. Um, yeah. So anyway, not a lot of uh, hope for the PC candidate, but very interesting between the NDP and Liberal. Uh, this one might be. Pretty much done for for Drew, unfortunately. Uh, we got 24 out of 36, handful of writings uh, still to report in. So it, uh, I don't know, I don't know what they're gonna call this. It, might, it may turn around. I don't think anybody worked harder on the campaign than he did. And I wished him all the best there on uh, Saturday or Sunday. I was chatting with them. So yeah, no, but. he was. Well, you know, that's the thing with the younger candidates, our generation younger candidates, you know, they have, a uh, few of them have the vigor, have the, the drive to, to want to do stuff. And so, because, yeah. That too. yeah. Um, uh, Selena Ross, Chronicle Herald, uh, tweets, uh, probably goes without saying that the NDP headquarters is really, really hushed and sad. People are crowded around TVs, no candidates that she can mm. see here. 
Jim, do you do you think that they're being judged too harshly? Like they're uh, getting spanked. Like they're going to be the third. They're not going to be the official opposition if if the current trend holds steady. Uh, they they did a lot to try to bring in jobs, but didn't do enough to keep jobs. But, uh, did I don't know if that makes makes any sense? Yeah, it makes uh, it makes sense. They they made they made too much effort to go for the big money, uh, but didn't look at the smaller picture to keep the smaller jobs. Uh, I, I think I think the ship start here thing kind of bit them too. Look, hey, two hundred. I mean, they, they had nothing to do with it, but they were trying to you know. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. it didn't look good in the end. If you're going to spend big money on a campaign like that, you damn well better have guys with hard hats and work boots walking in the walking in the warehouse or in the dry docks. Yeah. That just didn't happen. Actually, 130 people walked out permanently. That's right. Yeah. And what do you shortly think? Shortly after. So. Yeah. And where do you where do you think they're going? They're going to Alberta. They're not going to wait until Irving finishes the thing after they're 200. Going to wait. Well, no, I was. Two hundred thirty million forgivable loan for a company that didn't need the money. Um, you know, and I think pro problem with the shipyard. People expected the steel to cut right away, but they said, but they didn't say enough. Nothing's happening at least until twenty fifteen. Yeah, yeah. See, they didn't manage that well. Manage expectations, people. People are poor people. Like I know, there's a single mom with her two sons who are um, 19 and 21. Mm -hmm. They scraped together, got loans, and she sent them to community college. One's a rigger, and one's a welder. And where are they now? They're in debt. One's working uh, part time at Montana's as a dishwasher. And I tell you, they're the clock's going to run out on them unless they leave the province. They're going to lose their ticket because they won't have, you know, they'll lose the. You have to have so many hours in and so long. Right. Yeah. So they're going to be permanently a part-time dishwasher with thousand dollars in debt, you know, that they had to pay to go to community college, because that's what the government told them. They said, "Ship start here. There's going to be jobs. Everybody, yep. go get training." There's a three-year yeah. waiting list to get into for a welder at the it community college. It was all about, was all about optics, and it was. Yep. They, and it was very responsible because look at look at all these people. Young so we're people training really... we're training people to leave. Yeah, training people to go to Alberta, which is just so heartbreaking. As somebody who wants this province to do well oh, and yeah. succeed. But then again, can you can can we blame them for? for you can't blame a, You can't blame a person for trying to earn a good living, and uh, you know moving away because that's what you got to do now. But. You know, not only does their money go and their taxes and their benefit and their contribution to this province, if they don't come back, their kids aren't going to come back. You know, there's just nothing. It's just we we trained them to leave and never come back, maybe for a vacation. You know, this is where your granddad grew up, you know, to drive the kids and, and go back to Alberta or whatever. Well, you know, it's almost like what happened at work today. And I don't usually talk about work, but you know, we had to, to do some some stuff about our workplaces. We did a survey, how things are going. Employee survey didn't go very well, and uh, basically talking about you know how can we improve morale and stuff. And of course, I gave out the some suggestions where basically the workplace is not the same as your daddy's was. So you're thinking about People in Nova Scotia has this mentality that, you know, a job is you go to university, you get a job in the government, and you're there for 30 years, it's over. It doesn't work like that anymore, right? You, you have to be able to adapt to different workplaces, different uh, um, environment situations, and dealing with things a little bit more fast. So, uh, well, Looking here on Twitter. Oh, yeah, Kings North ahead, just uh, switched from NDP to PC. Ooh. It's been it's been uh, ND, in the NDP colors for quite some time, but it's just switched over to blue. Kings cool. North, uh, Stephen Pearl for the Liberals, Jim Morton for NDP, with the incumbent in uh, John Lohr for for the PCs. Uh, Global uh, saying that Dartmouth South was going to Liberals. Alan Rowe 
from uh, uh, Global TV personality going into uh, the fray. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at uh, the election uh, result screen and see how much red we have here. And uh, it's it's filling out. You know, other it's I'm just shocked. There's one bit of orange. I see one bit of orange in the HRM, which is Halifax Needham North and Halifax, which blows even, my mind. You know, even the Yarmouth that they spent what was it, thirty million for a new ferry? It's it's gone liberal, but that's kind well, of that's a that's kind of a liberal riding down there. Well, you know what? Let's take a look here. Maybe maybe this is not going to be orange for long. Take a look. There's only 28 votes difference between the NDP Ooh, and the Liberals. Is that in Needham? Oh yeah. Yeah, Needham. Uh, a little bit less now. Oh yeah. So 20 of 48. So it, oof, there's still lots more to go. Yeah. Yep. A lots more to go. Uh, let's take a look at the one at Yarmouth. We talked about the ferry just right before uh, the election was called. Graham Steele, the uh, backup MLA from Economic World Development went in and all of a sudden started announcing all these monies, taking away the surplus, and said that there's a deal with, uh, oh, of course there's nothing there, no results available from there. <laughs> of course. Of Pretty course. Much. They shipped anyway, by ferry. Well, you know, we talked, basically we talked earlier about the, the Armith ferry, uh, taking away, you know, pulled that subsidy out, destroying the tourism area and business. Last minute, miraculously, got a new ferry deal with Maine, and uh, not not to dismiss the new project, I think the new project is a much better business plan than what the cat was. I think only because it's a, it's a, it's a more appropriate ship. It focuses on the Americans, visitors to come up here, more of an event leaving from Portland, and then they can either rent a car, go to the valley, go to the South Shore. That's what we want, not necessarily yeah. the other way around. Yeah, I agree, Jim. We talked about this on the Hangout one night, so it's... Yeah. So I'm trying to see the six that the NDP are... There's two up in Sydney, and there's two on the South Shore, and one one in Halifax or two? There's uh, only one in Halifax, South Shore, which is Queen Shelburne, and uh, Chester St. Margaret's, which are where all the rich people in Chester live. Um, That's it's funny. our it's funny they're voting NDP. It's funny. It's funny where they're keeping the support. Well, obviously they're not going to lose uh, Liverpool because that's where they gave the most money. Oh, we just got one in Metro here that went back to. Uh, went back red. Went back to no. Went back to orange. Sackville Cobbequid went to Whoa, NDP. Whoa, Sackville Cobbequid, but that's not uh, of course no no results. The Sackville uh, Cobbequid. Is uh, Graham Cameron, Dave Wilson, which is the incumbent for the NDP, Peter McIsaac of the PCs. Uh, but the one writing in that area, the writing next to that, which is uh, more interesting, which is the uh, Sackville Beaver Bank, which is the, uh, no, not Sackville Beaver Bank. It is Waverly Fall River. Waverly Fall River Beaver Bank. Which is uh, Percy Paris, oh, yes. the uh, Malcolm Sockham MLA. Uh, he only put in like maybe five re-election signs in total for uh, within the writing, which is a very wide writing. Uh, that was even uh, commented upon in Frank Magazine that uh, you know well. very low key election for uh, re-election for Percy for uh, for the NDP, but looks like uh, Bill Horn. Yeah, just, went just went back to liberal. Sackville Cobbequid. Now Bill Wong, and only because I drive by Fall River a lot, um, he is. Uh, oh, I didn't have the screen screen share. Show uh, here. I'll show the show the share. You can see Bill Horn is gonna probably win this uh, by a lot. Oh, yeah. Looks of it here. Bill Wong, he started putting his signs on for months before the election was called. Really? Yeah. That's not yeah. cool. No. Well, they, you know, it's very simple. I don't know if uh, if NDP had a feeling that they were going to be in for a spanking by being so low-key 
in a number of writings in terms of signs, um, and also not having all candidates field for all 51 writings. That, that's the thing that's the well, I know right there. A lot of the uh, NDP candidates were hammering the Liberals about uh, McNeil having a bus. Just absolutely, that was, you know, carbon footprint and all this, and why isn't he driving around in vans like Daryl had like a bus Dexter. last time. Daryl had a bus last time. Yeah. Well, didn't he fly to Port Hawkesbury to call the election? He was on the Emera jet a couple times. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, they just absolutely, and I... I don't know. Like, I thought it was kind of odd that that was their main thing. Is like the guy has a bus. Yeah. Okay. So he has a bus so he can work and bring his guys around with him. Mm. <laughs> Anthony Martin on uh, Twitter says here it looks like Graham Steele is making a plea for forgiveness on CBC. What is the story with that? That is one thing I would like to know. Is why Graham Steele, after all the years in in opposition. To get into power and probably get the second most powerful position in the government. Well, number two, finance, right? Well, well, that's. I think there's something that hasn't either came out or hasn't come out because I know somebody that knows him. He's a very stand-up, very clean-cut person. He wouldn't stand for shenanigans. Yeah. And playing around with the books. And if he thought that his name was going to be attached to something bad, I think that's was be grounds to resign. I'm just guessing, but, uh, you know, this is a man who dedicated his life to public service. and yeah, 11, 12 years, and then all of a sudden it's like, eh, in the I, middle. Had of the, I, had, I had enough of the negativity. Yeah, and it wasn't like it was, you know, it wasn't like it was, you know, last spring and, you know, you're leading up to an election. I'm not going to rerun. Yeah. It's like I resigned right in the, right in the middle. I'm not going to Right in the back. middle of it. I think it was a, a few weeks before the budget. Yes, and that's why I think something, something was, there was up. Some shenanigans going on. Shenanigans, I tell you. Uh, Don Mills on Twitter from the CRA says nightmare scenario for the NDP and Metro. We expected Libs to win a clear majority of seats, but not all of them. <laughs> Don Mills, he's a he's a PC, isn't he? Didn't he run? Uh, his hat in no, a I thought I thought he was liberal. Oh, maybe. Uh, let's see. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, That's a real battle out there in uh, Riding 44. Sackville Cobbequid keeps going back and forth. It's very close. Yeah, it's, all yeah. right. Let's take, let's take a look at the map. Live election result map yeah, from yeah, election uh, Nova Scotia. So it's, uh, yeah. Now let me click on the show elected to see if there's anybody uh, declared elected at this point in the game. No, not quite. Not there yet. They're being very cautious, aren't they? Well, I'd say once we get hit to 10.30, we'll, we'll probably... Well, yeah, uh, I mean, I mean here's, uh, here's Colchester North, 41 of 44 polls reporting, and uh, Karen Casey has uh, about 2,500 votes more than, you know, the person... Cole Chester North. Let's take a look so, here. I mean, that's that's pretty much a given. Yeah. It should be, she'll, oh, that's she'll a keep huge. Yeah. yeah. Huge. I think we call that, we'll call that one too. You heard it yeah. here first. We're calling that. We're calling Diana Whalen. With uh, with a very uh, high percentage of uh, certainty. Uh, what was the other writing we wanted to look at, uh, Keith? It was uh, Hammond's Plains, I think, right? Hammond's Plains. Hammond's Plains, Lucasville. That one was interesting because... Oh, look at that. The rejected uh, municipal uh, candidate, Peter Lund, was thought he would uh, be able to jump up. And uh, the young Bill, Ben Jessam, is kicking he's, ass. He's pretty kicking well ahead of it, eh? He is. And he's on 26 out of 31, so the game is almost done. And uh, Hammond's Plains, Lucasville, for, for people who don't know, that's uh, that's a very, uh, a lot of it on the right side of that map. There's a nice line you can do here. A lot of houses from the right side of my arrow. That's uh, very expensive homes. And to the left, not so expensive. Uh, but um, very interesting uh, that Peter Lynn, two-time loser, in the last two elections, municipal and provincial, from the looks of it. 
Uh, looks like uh, Dexter might be the next CEO in no, Nova Scotia Power, the way things are going. Or on the board of directors. Yeah, I figure he'd be board of directors of uh, Emira and probably St. John's Shipbuilding or Halifax yeah. Shipyards or whatever. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll keep him busy so he can Oops. spend his retirement money. Well, it's Ross, the... Ross Landry's going to lose his seat too. Who's that? Ross Landry in uh, Picto Center. He's going to lose his seat. Uh, Pat Pat Dunn has about uh, 1,200 more votes than him. Oh, Picto Center. That's Pat, cool. Pat Dunn, wasn't he in the PCs back back in the day, back it, before the yeah, last election? Yeah, I thought so too, yeah. The name sounds yeah. familiar. Now, uh, NDP, um, again, uh, but, you know, Queen Shelburne, uh, Sterling Beliveau, uh, I believe the fish, was it? fisheries minister, right? He's holding on to dear life. Oh, yeah, I'd say folks. It's He's close, but okay. he'll probably sail through at this point, unless uh, somebody stuffed the box somewhere. And uh, that was one of the writings that they got realigned too. So that one was really up in the air too, from uh, from what we were hearing before. But uh, I'm trying to get back to the um, Dartmouth uh, Coal Harbor to see how. Uh, Premier Dexter is, is doing here. Coal Harbor, Portland Valley. Uh, Premier is losing, as of right now, his, uh, his seat uh, by a, a, a good little uh, margin. About 150 votes, more or less. Well, still got a lot of life left there to yeah. get through. Still but, a lot. Uh, yeah. It's... Uh, it's, it's very interesting, um, you know, now you've seen on Twitter here that, you know, uh, you know, were we too harsh on him and stuff like that? I'm seeing one tweet here from uh, Fire Puncher. Happy to see Dexter getting spanked. All the nastiness of his gang of internet trolls will be swept away with him. <laughs> and I think that goes back to what we were saying earlier, Todd, about how... He ran more like a conservative than an indie peer. Yeah, it's pretty much how I got. Like, uh, there's an article about on his brand. His brand was going to hurt the NDP. Uh, News957 is saying here that uh, the CP is reporting liberal Lena Diab elected in Halifax Armdale. Uh. That is the one that we uh, had our eye on, uh, friend uh, Drew. Drew Moore was running for the NDP oh. here. Let me let me take a let me zoom in to that area. He can hot, hold his head high. He ran a clean campaign well, yeah. and he worked hard. Yep. Unfortunately, exactly. it was uh, you know the right guy at the wrong time. Well, that's just it. In, in my opinion. But. Uh, no, that's Joachim's uh, writing, and his lead just increased uh, quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Armdale. Yeah, yeah, no, the lead is uh, is gaining. Uh, Frank Magazine might have it there, uh, you know, a little bit more extra money for the Little Bull campaign, maybe. And uh, need him still tight. Yeah, it's kind of flipping and flopping. Which one's that? Halifax Needham. Halifax Needham. Let's take a look at that. Halifax Needham. Ah, oh, that's North End. Yes, the North End. Yeah, that's flipping. Look at that. 25 votes. Man, still got way more votes to count. Yep. Yeah. Way more so, votes. Let's talk about the. Uh, did you? Well, you don't have TV, Jim. No. Did you see any of the ads? No, I've I've been listening to some of the radio ads. Yeah. Uh, and well, what did you think? Uh, to me, they all sounded the same. Yeah. Uh, but there was I agree. but there was definitely a little bit more money on uh, anti NDP uh, radio ads. Just at the last few days, we had some yeah. NDP. Pro ads coming through. Yeah, they spent a lot of money on attacking McNeil. Mm. I found on uh, at least on Global. Um, I don't watch a lot of local TV, but for, I was watching something. <laughs> Might have been the uh, Simpsons or something like that. 
on Sunday, but uh, yeah, they they played the same one every commercial. It was the one where McNeil said something about the uh, health going back to health boards like 1999, and they played oh. like a they played like a two second sound bite over and over and over. It's like don't vote this guy. We're going back to 1999. Well, I mean, a lot of these ads take things. That, I mean, they all take them out of context. Exactly, right? they're, they're all the same. I'm not the saying same. that any particular bad, but that one just really mm. got on my last mm. nerve. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but when I see these ads over and over again, when somebody comes out and makes this bold accusation, I go and check. You know, I go and check and see how yeah. close to the truth it is, right? Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, you know, they attacked liberals a lot because, you know, obviously he was a front runner in the polls and stuff. But they've been trying to put, you know, Stephen McNeil was a punching bag for the few years as he was kind of rising from the ashes between him and the PCs as who would be the next one in waiting there because there was a sense by the media that, you know, who's going to be the next party that's going to go against the NDP and the PCs were just taking way too long to get organized and they were still in, in disarray. So you had the NDP that's been waiting there for a while, you know, maturing, getting a few, few more MLAs in place, gaining some experience and trying to, you know, to post an attack here. So I... I'd say it's safe to say there's going to be liberals uh, elected in my riding. Uh, Global Halifax says here that liberal Keith Colwell re-elected in Preston Dartmouth defeats NDP Andre Kane. Didn't know he was a superstar, but <laughs> apparently they said he was an NDP superstar. Wow. Uh, Check raise Nova Scotia on Twitter says here that the fact that the NDP are surprised shows how little they have listened to Nova Scotians. Yeah, I, I guess that's a lot to that statement. A lot to it. That's a lot, yeah. Yeah, I... Somebody was asking me, I forget who it was, they were asking about why the Liberals were attacking the PCs too much, and I said, of, of anything, that would be their worst nightmare, would be to split the vote with the... Uh, PCs and let the NDP win a win a riding. Yeah. yeah. So. So do you think do you think there's a lot of strategic voting that went on this uh, this election? I think a lot of a lot of elections there is, especially if people don't want a minority. Or, I mean, a lot of times you don't think. Hmm. And my vote, your vote goes towards the leader, obviously, of the party. But uh, oh. sometimes you have to think strategically. What what's going to work for you too? The uh, elections Nova Scotia has uh, one one officially elected now. Oh, let's. I'm not take sure a... where it is. It's just there's a new little graphic on the pa page. Oh, well, all right. Let me uh, bring it up here, and uh, we'll show it on our big screen. We're not yep. fancy like Fox News with their Microsoft 57-inch oh. uh, tab tablets two, here. Two elected. All right, here. Um, uh, yeah, they're starting to roll. They'll start to roll in now. Here we go. Well, maybe they waited until ten o'clock. Here we go. Yeah, two fifty-one report. Got a couple. So let's start with the first one here. Kate Breton, uh, Richmond. Okay, that was one that they realigned to include uh, Port Hawkesbury, mm. and there was a lot of discussion about uh, <laughs> urbanizing that uh, <laughs> that riding. <laughs> As Didn't much really. as you can by adding Port Hawkesbury, because traditionally <laughs> it was kind of like a rural riding. Everybody knew if you didn't know the candidate, you knew his dad, kind of thing. Yeah. Now they kind of added in the municipal kind of uh, seat for the area, whatever you want to call it. So. It's still so went Pete Limbrough, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> Frank, Frank Frank Magazine had here uh, the NDP candidate uh, town councilor. Bert Lewis is not a factor in this race, despite the great support provided by the government and uh, to the paper mill. As in most Cape Breton write-ins, this will be a two-way fight between PCs and Liberal, and, and looks like Liberal won yeah, handily. handedly. And that with all the money that they put into Port Hawkesbury. Well, what are you going to do? Money can't buy you happiness. But you can pick your own misery. Mm. Oh, jeez. 
Uh, okay, let's take a look at a couple of the other uh, writings here that they're they're counting here. Well, uh, that's one of them. Here. Colchester, Colchester North. North. Karen Casey, I think we called that before our decision desk. Yeah. We called it a little while ago. Forty-four of uh, forty-four polls reporting almost sixty percent uh, voter turnout. Excellent. Uh, well, Karen Casey kicking kicking ass on that one. And uh, the next one, which is, of course, now I'm going to tell Global to stop refreshing the page here. Clayton Park West, <laughs> another one that uh, we called we call, earlier tonight. Jeez, we need to be pundits on some network. Uh, well, you know, this is our trial. This is our trial. Is it? This, yeah, this is our trial. Maybe next year we'll get on here. Diana they may Lee. not have let us drink beer, though, on Global. I don't know. We'll have to ask. No, that. but you know what? That's why we're the alternative. We are the alternative. But we tell it like it is. Just put it in is. a coffee cup. Nobody will know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so anybody who's watching don't know what the hell's going on. This is the <laughs> election results. <laughs> Night. It's not Friday night. What the hell? No, it's no, it's not Friday night. Hey, we, we're interested in the politics, of course, and we're just going over the live results of the Nova Scotia provincial elections. And um, you know what? CBC predicts PC leader Jamie Bailey will take his seat in Cumberland South. He's been leading, I think, I think almost all night. Yeah. So, and from what I hear, I don't, I don't know. I, I hear he's a nice guy. I don't know a lot about him. Yeah, like look, look. There's a lot of stuff that I like. He had his five point plan for a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of it was cutting a lot of jobs, a lot of civil service jobs, a lot of yeah. uh, other jobs, and cutting this, cutting that. All I heard was cut, cut, cut. And it's like, whoa, do we want to? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, when he said that, I'm going to cut the civil service. I guess I said, I guess he's not counting on any votes in Halifax, where yeah. all the civil servants live. Whew. Did you check out uh, Yarmouth? Uh, the votes. Wow. Let's go. Let's go to Yarmouth decision desk. Avoiding chores. Dis decision desk. Uh, I think that's a no a no brainer. Yarmouth, and uh, let me. <laughs> yee, yee, let's yeah. me bring this up here. We can talk a little bit more about Yarmouth again. Yarmouth, uh, hey, nobody cares about what happened to the ferry. Yes. Whoa. There's about 4,000 people that would disagree. Oh, my God. I guess when you don't listen to anybody for four years and then parachute in a bunch of money, I guess it doesn't yeah. work. It does yes. not work. They Well, I tell you, like I said, I was down in Yarmouth the uh, last week of August, and they were very, very angry with the government. Very angry. So I guess that didn't change. And they don't forget. So Yeah. The thing now the thing is like, look, you know, you're going in there, you don't quite understand the rural Nova Scotia, which is one of the knocks against the NDP. They pulled six million dollars. Business wasn't viable. It's six million dollars, but then that six million dollars had a lot of, uh, even though it was the wrong type of ferry, the wrong business. There could have been other things to do. They could have looked at another type of ship, you know, the company. You know, they could have done something without shutting it down for four years, and all of a sudden, you know, trying to re resurrect it, right? Much like what they did with the pulp mills, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm, Muskrat Falls. Muskrat Falls. Voter turnout, 54%. Lower than anticipated. Really? Uh, now, we had, we'd enjoyed the, for, for this election one month of advanced polling. Uh, I went to my local, one of my local shopping malls to vote. It was very nice and easy, very convenient. Seven day, six days of the week, except for Sundays, it was great. And then you had the, your two days of advanced polling. So they said that there was almost almost two hundred thousand that took advantage of those advanced pollings, but yet we did not crack sixty uh, percent. Well, I like I told somebody today, I said if you didn't vote in this election. It was because you're in a coma, or you're you're lazy. Because <laughs> there was all month, and that shut down. I think on Thursday, 
no, it shut down on Saturday. Polls. That was the advanced mm -hmm. polls, though. That was different. Uh, the advanced yeah, polls open yeah, Friday right. and Thursday, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And if you're shut in or, you're, or, you know, if you can't drive, there was lots of drives. If you were shut in, they would come in a van to election officers and you could vote with them there. So there's no reason why people shouldn't have voted. Exactly. Absolutely none. And no. I told that to people today. I said, it's if you don't vote, you're just lazy. There, oh, there was lots of... Way too much opportunity, and you had election voter uh, election counters coming by the door to remind you and stuff. And of course, you had the signs. Of course, that made uh, made sense yeah. here. But uh, Halifax Shabukto, they called it, uh, goes to uh, Yokum uh, Stronic, um, owner of the trail shop. A few other businesses pulling ahead of uh, Greg Ash. Greg Ash called uh, Yoakum's uh, election uh, headquarters con to congratulate him. So oh. that was uh, interesting. Interesting that he pulled by such uh, a quick, uh, a large margin uh, at this point of the game. I'm um, just looking up uh, Halifax Armdale and lead for Alina. I think they called it, right? Didn't they say they called it? It's getting a little bit more. Uh, uh, it's getting a little bit more decisive here. There's like a 400 uh, vote spread between Drew and Lena. So, unfortunately for him, um, it might not happen for him tonight. You know what, Drew? You're probably not watching, but you're too nice to be in politics. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It need, yeah. It needs. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, he's too nice of a guy to be in politics, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, some people can stay, but I don't know. It's just it's a greasy business. Yeah, I get pretty jaded when I think about things like that, yeah. Mm. Uh, let's see. I'm just scanning Twitter here. So anything going on here? Uh, Global projects uh, Jamie Bailey will keep his seat in Cumberland South. Uh, one... Uh, uh -huh. PCs will form the official opposition, says CTV. Yeah, that's that's a long way to fall from government to third. Oof, to not even a, not even opposition party. No, and, and lost the leader, their, and the leader likely loses seat. So. Yeah, lost their leader. That's that's harsh. Well, but, let's take. But you know, I guess I guess people's feelings are, at least the people who voted are right there. Um, yeah. I'm checking uh, Cole Harbor, Portland Valley, and uh, the Liberal is leading by 45 votes with uh, 52 of 55 uh, still, polls reporting. It's pretty thin then, isn't it? Well, that's very thin. It did recount, uh, you know. To the wire. Oh, hang on. It just refreshed here. Uh, we got a 40 vote spread for the Liberals in uh, Daryl Dexter's writing. So that's uh, ye. That's not looking good. Not looking good at all. Uh, let's see. Now they're saying it's fifty-four percent voter turnout. Fifty-four. What was the last vote? Uh, do you have that stat there, Jim? The last no, voter turnout. No, I'm not. I, no, I haven't seen it uh, come up through here and. What was it was in the fifties too. It wasn't. Uh, wasn't great, wasn't it? Hang on a sec. It should have been much more. Hang on a sec. Let me try to bring it up here. Uh, four years ago, that was what two thousand nine. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Let me ask Google for that answer. Um. Hang on a sec. Wikipedia. Oh, voter turnout. Um, oh, do, 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 do. Uh, what, what, 
Uh, the last vote, 411,000 people voted. What's that? That's about, uh, I don't know. <laughs> How many eligible voters are there? Uh, uh, so I'm not, see, it's funny, they don't have that particular number of turnout. Mm. It wasn't great. It wasn't a great turnout either. I see, see, in the last election, uh, there was a 56% drop in support from PCs, and 55% went to the New Democratic Party. Now we're seeing a good chunk of that, of that 55%, went to the liberals at this point. Uh, the PCs had 10 seats elected in the last election. And uh, uh, they are projected right now at um, how many seats they have here? I think I think I saw seven. Something eleven. Like that, yeah. So they gained one seat, which is still not bad. Jamie Bailey will keep his job as leader for for one more term. He'll get a nice bump in pay, won't he? As official opposition. Yeah. Well, you know, he gets the car and stuff like that. So. But yeah, NDP leading in seven seats. Seven seats from um, from 31. From 31 seats to seven at this stage in the game. Big disappointment, obviously. Liberals, they went from 11 seats, and right now 11 to 33. So we saw that 55%. That's people had enough. They gave the NDP a chance. They say we're gonna go give liberals a try now. Maybe it won't be quite as brutal. Um, you think the liberals will do anything better? You think because uh, right now they're kind of like wait and see how things work out. And then we might tweak things a bit. Steve McNeil's been leader for how long now? Well, a couple cycles now. Like, uh, I'm not saying, you know, how they'll do, but he should have an idea about how things, you know. I think with a lot of them, is like, you know, they'll say, you know, we won't give money to corporate handouts and stuff, and then they'll get in there and it's like, oh, crap, we really can't do what we said we were going to do. You know what I mean? Like, No, no, yeah. I said I wouldn't get the band out for... Corporate bandos. So yeah, so we can give them a handout. We just won't get our band out. Yeah. You know, we'll change the hundred million dollar loan from forgivable to yeah, partly forgivable. Yes. They're throwing the money away like Tra that. Training no allowance, training allowances, yep. and training allowances. corporate tax holiday. Yeah. yeah. No, no, there's gonna be yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff here. Uh, Global Halifax says here that uh, Liberals Lloyd Hines wins Guysboro Eastern Shore Takadzi from uh, the NDP incumbent Jim Boudreau. Uh, for some reason, Justin Trudeau is trending in Halifax. Okay. <laughs> Frank Magazine says Dexter's losing by 11 votes with two more polls to go. Will he even bother to ask for a recount? Jesus. Yeah, he I guess. He's not, he's not going to stay. He's going to go to his board of directors at Amera and forget this nightmare the last couple of years. I think. Yeah, he'll do all right. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, no, he'll be doing all right. But what about the rest of us? Well, it's not like he—they leave us a mess, right? And that's what some of the pundits were saying is like, unlike the conservatives last election, they left a big mess to clean up in NDP. They kind of cleaned things up a little bit. For the most part, they kind of clean things up a bit. You can't really point to, you know, we we said earlier. They got cleaned with negotiations. Go hire, go to Toronto, get some big-time negotiators so that when we have these companies that want to come do business, we have some guys in nice-looking suits to tell them, no, 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 no. It's going to be this way if you want to do business in the province. 
Um, they balance the books, restain the ferry. They're trying to save some jobs, but they put a lot of money into jobs that didn't come. Blackberry was one. IBM. If you're one of those for windmills that didn't uh, happen. If you're one of those families or one of those people, you know, who are you not going to vote for? You know, that's just the way it is. Power rates going up 30%. I think that was a sore spot for a lot of people was power. Power and HST went up 2%. HST. HST and power keeps going up, up and up. And, of course, bad timing, too. Oil goes up. You know, like uh, you know, even though I hate the I hated those ads on YouTube from uh, Jamie Bailey with the PCs, but his message was fine. Four years ago, I had a lot more money at the end of pay to save than I do now. In fact, now I'm in the red by the amount I had saved. What changed? Everything got a lot more expensive. I've cut cable. I've cut phones. I've cut a whole bunch of stuff. I'm still behind. I'm still paycheck. I'm not even yep. paycheck. I'm not even paycheck to paycheck. I am paycheck to minus uh, every month. So and, and that can't go on for too long. You're not the government. No, and uh, you know, <laughs> I, and, yeah, and I don't consider myself to be, you know, low wage or you know, like I should be in, well, you know, I'm not going to say what the job is, but, you know, I should be doing okay. I, I know I know what you're saying. On the outside looking in, people are going to say, hey, this person's doing okay or that person's doing okay, but it's 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 not that way, the way things are now. I mean, you know. I seriously doubt if I go through Hammond's Plains, uh, Lucasville writing, going through uh, Voyager Park or Kingswood with the half million dollar homes, in the two SUV car garages that they're doing all right. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of money jigging going on between credit cards and line of credits and stuff like that. And, and, this, and this transcends party politics, too. I mean, the way in this day and age, the cost of living is going way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's outstripping the increase in wages. Yeah. Big time. Raw deal, raw deal. They 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 got in at the wrong time to uh, to do stuff, right? You know, NDP got in at a wrong time, and they you know they had to clean up a mess. And all right, let's look at uh, a writing that uh, was of interest. The contrarian, because he was in the news, he took a picture of his ballot. He might get a five thousand dollar fine, and uh, he voted basically for the PCs because he was saying that Keith Bain was the only guy that has showed up to com to support the community in forty three years. Pam Ecking is only riding her husband's coattails because he's an MP, and she figured the name will uh, guide her to uh, election victory. And it looks like that is correct, or it's the red wave. It's it's a lot of thing. Like a lot of these guys that won NDP last time, right time, right place. Yeah. And it's the same probably for the liberals this time. Some of the candidates may not be as strong as other ones, but right place, right time. That's all I, there is I think to it. you're right. I think sometimes the party could run a mannequin and it would win. Just and again, on, on the you know on, yeah. And on the flip side of that, there's some really good people. That didn't get in that should have, no. just because they hitched their wagon to the wrong party. Well, that goes back to strategy, like we were talking about before. It's, it's you know, all about strategy. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm I have here on the map uh, the elected writings so far, and we have I think five out of fifty-one, but uh, these cover uh, quite a bit of geography. Uh, Eastern we see Shore. It yeah, Eastern Shore, Cape Breton, uh, Cumberland South. Basically, the writings that we called. Uh, there's one in Sackville that looks like uh, got called. Let me uh, zoom in here once uh, this refreshes. Sackville. I forget who was in Sackville. Stephen Go. Cool. Matt. Oh, beats Matt. Why not? Wow. That's a that's a big uh, that's a biggie. Because mm. I believe he was. Uh, 
he was the front line guy for a lot of media scrums and stuff. Like uh, yeah. in terms of media and stuff, he was he was the the front end guy, and he was he was pretty good dealing with that kind of stuff. So very very interesting. Dexter defeated CBC News predicts. That's kind of the uh, icing on the cake, isn't it? And, this uh, night. Yeah, as I if I as I take a quick look, 52 of 55 writings uh, reported. Uh, Tony Ince, uh, is winning by oh, oh good 40 votes right now. Uh, 40 votes tight, tight, but um, yeah, not uh, not looking good for Daryl. Not looking good for Daryl at all, which is uh, a big shock. Big, big shock. I didn't expect that. No, no. No, I expected I didn't, I didn't him to expect at least the NDP yeah. to lose as many seats as they did either, really. No. It's just a complete collapse. So I don't know if he can come back and rebuild. You probably won't see much from the NDP for a while. Oh, for a long time. Like... Oof, they can bring Mo Clara all he wants, but I think we're going to see more Justin a lot more, uh, a few more times now. Uh, Adrian Lee on Twitter says the NDP massacre is so full that CP reports Leonard Preya lost his seat. He's genuinely a decent guy, strong proponent of the arts. Leonard Preya, uh, Piera, uh, where is he from? Play some. Halifax Citadel. Sable okay. Island. Um, let's see. Look, everybody's saying De uh, Frank and CTV, they're saying that Darrow Dexter lost his seat. Global, it's Dexter lost his seat. It's unbelievable. CTV lost his seat. Frank, Dex is out of here. Oh, they must have called Jamie Bailey's rioting. I see they have elected uh, one PC now. 31 five. votes Darrow Dexter lost his seat on. Wow. That's close. That, I don't know. Uh, that kind of stinks. There will be an automatic recount. Oh, for sure, but would you rather lose by 30 votes or, oh, God, yeah. or 300? <laughs> I don't know. Who Which are those worse? 31 you know, people? 3, or, I have yeah. to... What's that? Yeah. Who are I, those old ladies that didn't go vote for him? And, and now the gloating starts on Twitter. Uh, I won't say who tweeted this, but... No, no, uh, say it. Say it's on Twitter. T say it. Team Adam 76, he's saying to Ali something and HFX Lauren, who were huge, huge NDP tweeters, just massive amounts of NDP tweets every day. Uh, he says, phew, you both are so quiet. Nice to see you back. Did you lose your internet connection? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have to say this. I've been staying away from Twitter the last few weeks more than I usually do because there's been so much smack talk about this election on there. People well, that you know, are normally that, pretty... Uh, that is interesting because I don't follow certain of the hashtags for NS Poly, um, no. which where a lot of this stuff is happening. I do follow quite a few people, but the way that I have my Twitter timeline set, I have lists where I have people kind of segmented, so I must have them in, an, in one that I don't see them because I don't, I have not seen that increase of political smack talk and stuff like that. I only see people reacting to it, so obviously I'm missing those handful of people that I would see that Twitter talk, but so anyway. It's, I'm surprised they've called uh, Kings North as PC. Really? That was the one that was kind of going back and forth all night. It's yeah, I mean, look, you look at the numbers. Wow, it's a th it was a three-way race there up until yeah. yeah. Wow. Kings West also declared liberal. So we have six uh, liberals elected and one PC. No NDP as yet. As yet. You know, I, I imagine uh, NDP will keep the true seat. Yeah, uh, I, I expect what we're seeing right now, 33, 7, and 11. I think that's probably, it's probably going to be what good, we'll eh? see in the morning. Yeah, It's been pretty steady on those numbers for probably a good 10, 15 minutes now. Uh, Maritime State of Mind tweets, 
totally makes sense. Halifax NDP voters who just couldn't vote NDP this time stayed home instead of looking for a new party. Yeah, well, there wasn't a whole lot of non-traditional parties. I believe there was seven independents running in the province mm -hmm. for the uh, Green Party, the Atlantica Party, and the Nova Scotia Party, I think. So there wasn't a whole lot of uh, groundswell of grassroots organizations popping up. It was pretty much mainstream, uh, you know, political parties. Uh, all political parties had 51 candidates running. <laughs> so I, I was wondering if they were going to make it. Uh, on Twitter, uh, Frank Magazine tweets, uh, oops, word is Kelly... Um, accidentally hung up on congratulatory, congratulatory phone call from Paul Martin. Don't worry, he's not too busy. He'll call back. <laughs> uh, um, just a few tweets behind here. Everything's coming in uh, pretty, pretty strong. Uh, Sterling Bellavo retains his Queen's Shelburne seat, which is really surprising because, uh, well, you know. Maureen McDonald still ahead by 100 votes. Uh, 10 polls left to report. Mm -hmm. NS Elections is trending. NS Liberals is trending. Uh, NDP Education Minister Ramona Jennings loses her King's South seat. Oh. And Keith Irvin. Not surprising. Of all the turmoil within the education, we talked earlier in the hangout how much of a mess that was. Wow. Aaron Tra Trafford said, I showed up at Maureen McDonald's Agricola Street HQ and was asked to leave. Uh -oh. <laughs> then, then they shut the door and locked it. What? What? Wow. Whoa. That's going to get you some attention even if you don't want it. So. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron, Aaron's saying that here? What do we got here? Aaron, Aaron Trafford. Wow. Maureen McDonald. Yeah, that's right. I thought she was leading. Did she lose? Or is she just grumpy? Uh, where's she at? Cole Harbor? No, Agricola Street. I think she might be the uh, oh, Citadel good. one. Yeah, let's, let's use our decision desk. View. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Go through... See what's going on. Let's take a closer look, yo. Uh, not Shabukto, not Needham. Citadel cable item? No. no. <laughs> a tough night for a lot of good people. The people Oof. have spoken. Well, at least 50% of them. Yeah. Um, need them. Oh, she's winning. Oh, somebody. What was that? She's winning? Yeah. I guess they just don't like reporters. Um, so somebody up in the Wallace River said they are worried because they painted their door orange last week. <laughs> <laughs> It looks good though, because it's like it goes well right with the siding. I, I like it a lot. I like that color. So. <sighs> I'm colorblind. All right, the NDP is the first incumbent government, provincial government in Nova Scotia, not to form a second term or a second government in 131 years. Oh. This is going down it, history for all the wrong reasons. Now. It is a nightmare. <laughs> it's literally a nightmare for people. It's like. You know, you know, the joke was when the election was called, you know, not a lot was going to happen around government around this time. Uh, John uh, Lefebvre uh, says on avoiding chores, Dexter is giving his losing speech on CTV right now. Hopefully people are watching this uh, on their mobile device so they don't have to leave. Mm, yeah, Frank. it's going to be an early night for people, I think. Yeah, now, of course, there's a lot of people already claiming, you know, 54% turnout. We need uh, we need election reform in Nova Scotia. 
Well, what do you do? Like, what, you pay people, give people tax credits? Uh, what? Like, they were, we had the polls open for a month. Maybe tie it to their tax return. It's, Just uh, say, did you, did you, you did you vote? It's in other places. I think everybody should vote, but why, why are we treating people like children? If you don't vote, we're going to punish you. Like, it's, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we, Frank, we just, we just take that privilege very lightly. I think we do. We do. Yeah, we, we've had it too of, easy. For, disgusting. You know. Too easy for too long. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. But that goes not just for provincial, but for federal you know, too. But it's it's sad when you get to a higher turnout for Crafts Hockey Town or whatever it is, Hockeyville, than you do for a provincial election. Yeah. Uh, the Regans have arrived. I can see the flashes flickering off Jeff's dome. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Frank Magazine. <laughs> ah, good old Frank. Uh, yeah, decks are speaking now. So, uh, uh, Bryn uh, from News957 says, Daryl Dexter says the people have spoken and the McNeil deserves credit for the win. Again, I don't know. Could anybody have been leading the party and win? You know, give, you, give I mean, you, man, could credit, give, you could credit Dexter for McNeil's win too. It depends how yeah, you want to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not to not to take anything away from her or anything, but I'm just uh, saying, like, could anybody have been? You know, you know, not anybody, but uh, could an unknown have taken the party and won just because yeah. being in the again, you know, again, right place, right time? Yeah, you know, it's funny here because Bryn continues on. She tweets from Dexter's speech says. Dexter says he knows NDP didn't meet every expectation. They didn't meet any expectation. People wanted real change, and they started right off the bat with the spindle, uh, spending expense scandal and hiking up the HSD and started giving money to all these companies. People had it set in their minds that, no, they're, they're acting just like conservatives. Yeah, you're right. The spending scandal was pretty much straight out of the gate, wasn't it? Pretty much. Right, I mean, yeah. He went. Pretty he he was in South Carolina golfing while uh, they were saying that he had to pay back uh, almost eight thousand dollars. Yeah. He filled a well Rome burn. They've declared Sackville Cobbequid NDP, so that's the first elected seat uh, in this election for the NDP. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bryn 957 is saying here that Dexter is telling crowd that the NDP did do Nova Scotia, uh, what they did do for Nova Scotia, better seniors care and created more jobs. Uh, they probably did do better for seniors, but they did not create more jobs. They tried very hard to keep the jobs there by throwing a lot of money to a lot of companies, Blackberry, IBM, Irving. Bowater, Port Hawkesbury, Daewoo, throwing a lot of money for jobs, but not necessarily keeping jobs. Just as many examples of companies folding that uh, wanted government support that didn't get didn't get it. Yeah. So Michelle McCann's kind of echoing what you said earlier, Jim. So are we betting on how long before Dexter gets a sweet gig at NS Power? Uh, I think that's almost. He'll wait. Now, the question is, how long is he going to wait until it gets announced? Four months, six months, eight months? How long until that comes out? I'd say it has to be at least nine months. Why is it, if he's out of politics, why would he care? Uh, just I'll, because that's going to further d destroy the brand, I think. Let's just further throw the NDP down. It's like you want to... Well, you know what I mean? I, this is I don't think they could hurt themselves much more than this is, you know, this is bad for them. Uh, Selena Ross from the Chronicle Herald's tweets, we set, saying about Dexter here, we set new goals for using renewable energy. Most importantly to me, the NDP did more to reduce poverty than any previous government. I don't know. They, we've seen the population decrease because so many people are leaving. I've seen uh, people uh, complain about their electricity bill. 
Go yeah, around. I mean that's that would be one of the first things you would do to, to fight poverty. I would think. Wasn't it? Wasn't there some videos on YouTube of this lady in Cape Breton that uh, couldn't afford power? She was in this one bedroom apartment and upstairs, and she had drapes over the doorways and yeah. stuff. You know there is a safe there is a safety net here in Nova Scotia for uh, people that are so poor they can't afford to eat and things. Mm -hmm. It's the working poor that get suffer in Nova Scotia that are just above poverty but have trouble paying for food and electricity. There's no safety net for those people. I I used to work with a lady. I won't say where I was working, but she worked hard. She did good. She's a single mom. She had to give up food to buy her baby medicine. There's no safety net for her, but if she was on yeah. social assistance or whatever, that would be covered. Would have been bought for, yeah. So, you know, we, we helped her out because, you know, I, at the time I didn't have any kids or anything. But There's still people falling through the cracks. There, there always will be, but yeah. there's just a huge amount of people. Like now, because we're pushing people, you know, salaries down so much and expenses are going up yeah. so much, yeah. it's, it's widening. You know, that, uh, that crack is turning into a big, uh, anyway, I don't want to preach. Oh, yeah, a big gap. No, no, it's true. No, we're saying it's true. I'm um, just ch checking Twitter here. It just seems like now he's it's getting really emotional, Dexter's speech here, and, you know, uh, about when and what they've done and, you know, time to reflect and all that stuff. Now, I don't think you can say that Daryl Dexter was a bad guy or anything like that. Everybody kind of no. liked him there. It's just kind of how things went and how things were run, you know, by a few people of the Premier's office or one government, as Frank Magazine says. It's, it's, mm. It got to be, you know, really well, sticky. Yeah, well, it's like the guy that drives up the street and runs over your cat. You know, he might be the nicest guy in the world, but you're not going to like him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see they've declared uh, Daryl Dexter's riding liberal now. On Nova Scotia elections, so so we're at eight one and one. Wow! For declared uh, or elected. Um. Oh, sorry, just popped up to two. They declared another okay. PC. Um. Northside Westmount has gone PC. Up in uh, Cape oh, Breton really? Regional Municipality. Well, basically, all I'm seeing on Twitter is that they're announcing a lot more liberal seats being uh, expected PCs of obviously the opposition, yeah. which is good for uh, Jamie Bailey. Uh, I don't think the expectations were that high for him this time around. No. No, I don't think anybody expected him to win. Actually, I think uh, I was looking at there's some uh, thing that had the percentages. There's actually a 10% chance of a NDP majority, I think. But a zero percent chance of a, a PC majority, and I think a ten percent chance of a minority. So, mm. just goes to show, I guess. Uh, let's uh, let's show the uh, live election results screen right now, and show where people, where things are at right now. We're uh, almost two and a half hours into the uh, the close of the polls, and uh, we see a lot of red. The two lower call-out screen uh, boxes that you see at the bottom here, that's HRM and Halifax Dartmouth. That's where the bulk of the population is. And uh, that used to be all orange, pretty much all orange. Yeah. Only three writings that kind of stayed. Uh, mine, mine was Sackville. liberal and stayed liberal, yeah. Actually, only two. Sackville, Cobbequit, and Halifax Needham up to up to now they're they're staying the fight. Uh, everybody else is leading uh, is leaving here. Uh, Waverly, Fall River, Beaver Bank, Percy Paris there getting uh, trounced by Bill Horn. That show that's pretty Bill much Horn. Who is that? That sounds familiar. Ah, uh, Bill Horn. Hang on, let me check. Uh, Frank Magazine. Oh, they've they declared uh, Queen Shelburne as NDP, so that's their yeah. second seat that they've declared elected for NDP. Uh, okay. The uh, okay. Now I'm going to read from Frank Magazine, and uh, for for this writing here, uh, the incumbent has a big mustache on his face and a nasty chip on the shoulder, <laughs> of which tends to make him a comic figure. 
uh, talking about the NDP Percy Paris. Uh, now we're talking about the uh, liberal Bill Horn. Bill, a retired Environment Canada toiler who described uh, himself as a prominent community advocate and volunteer, quote unquote, came a respectable second last time out. Look for him to, to make this race even more respectable this time. And Brian Wong from the PCs is a teacher and possesses a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. So Percy Paris will likely uh, not get into a chest bumping confrontation with him during this election cycle. Who will win? Who should win? Bill Horn. Frank Magazine called it, and that is uh, coming true tonight. Hans West, Hans West has been declared PC. Hans West. So that's the third PC seat that they've declared elected. Uh, let's see, Hans West, which is Great. this one, yeah. uh, Windsor, Hansport, Windsor, where they moved the tourism agency. Much, much of that did. Uh, but uh, there was a few other companies that kind of left, wasn't there? Uh, a business that uh, that's uh, went bankrupt uh, in Hansport. Uh, wasn't there something there? I forget the name now. It was uh, yeah, it was a mineral or something? Jeez, I forget now. Was it um, the gypsum there? Yeah, gypsum. Yeah, American oh. gypsum or? Oh yeah, yeah, outside Windsor. That's where our one of our friends worked. Um, uh, uh, JC Storm's friend there was it uh, Army Al? Army Remember Al. Army Al. Yeah, he worked, he worked on the dock when the. The ships came in, so... Okay. Um, now, it's funny. Now that we're, we're starting to see the picture coming through and all the tweets are coming through, uh, Frank Magazine, because um, I'm reading some a lot of stuff from the Frank Magazine, this, I like to buy Frank Magazine because it makes me feel I'm part of the clique. But yeah. um, <laughs> they had a great election profile. They went by writing by writing. They kind of basically outlined who's the incumbent, who's the challenger, who's the parachute candidate, and it's very nice reading because it's funny. Uh, obviously, the writings that uh, we were interested in tonight, but basically they had called the election for the NDP 22-21-8. Uh, uh, liberals will, would, would have had 21 seats and uh, PCs would have lost a couple seats, but we've seen uh, quite the reversal uh, from uh, what uh, even Frank Magazine had uh, predicted, so that was kind of interesting. So they, they've declared uh, Picto East is now gone PC. Picto so, East, yes. there it is, yeah, came out. And uh, who was that here? Who was the incumbent? McKinnon. McKinnon, Carrie McKinnon. Clarence, yeah, Clarence, Clarence McKinnon, NDP, yeah. But I mean, Picto, Picto has a deep uh, PC roots and conservative roots. Well, yeah, exactly. And there wasn't that. Uh, I mean, Par Parker lost lost a seat too, so. Uh, Picto, Picto West. So. Picto East, yeah, the NDP was the incumbent. Uh, Clary McKinnon, uh, I'm reading from Frank Magazine, is a popular guy and a solid constituency man. If his boss manages to eke out a win on October 8th. Clary is a definite cabinet contender. Um, Francois Rochon, the liberal, is a Michelin toiling retired military dude on the hunt for third pension. And for the purposes of the election, Timothy's full name might as well be Houston as we have a problem. <laughs> so there you go. Clary will come short of getting his third pension. Uh, tonight, PCs is going to win that. But all three picked their <laughs> writings where it went uh, PC, so... Yeah. Oh. That's why I love Frank Magazine. They keep it real. Keep it real. That's what I like to do. Keep it real. Yeah, keep it real. But you know what? It. I'm so... I'm just... I'm just... Uh, I think everybody in the Twitter sphere, they just... Everybody's just shocked by the shellacking. King South has been declared a uh, liberal. King's South. Uh, king, King, King. Right below Cape Split, the one kind of between Cape Split oh, yes. and Hans there County. It there it is. Okay, sorry. All right, oh, that's right. The Education Minister Ramona Jennings. 
she had a difficult position to go in here because of all the education, the school boards, shenanigans that went on to try to clean it up, all the cuts, removing teachers per classroom, and ugh. You know what? The problem is, there's. we've mentioned this before in previous Hangouts. A lot of these education decisions, you won't see the net benefit until a full generation, a full 12 years have passed to see whether or not any of these decisions were good ones. And uh, unfortunately, she had to pay the price for that. Yeah, I'm not sure... Uh... We need to concentrate on fundamentals, I think. If we can teach kids to read and write and do math properly mm -hmm. and maybe to think, like we're pushing kids now, like I've got a lot of criticisms of the education system because I had I had two children uh, and they both needed, they both were the proverbial square block in the round hole and the education system didn't do anything for them. And not that I'm expecting, you know, people to do my job for me, but now everybody is going to have to bear the brunt of what, you know, kids that don't get an education, they're going to wind up in marginal jobs or no jobs. And then they're everybody's concern. So we need more programs for kids at risk, youth at risk, maybe – Maybe a traditional education isn't going to work. Maybe they need to get into some kind of a apprenticeship program or mentoring. You know, we don't do enough for youth in this province. That's why they leave. Yeah, well, they grow up and leave. But she's in. But she was in a tough position trying to clean up a lot of these yeah. uh, these school boards, and uh, you know we're, we're, we will have to go into this position where we're going to have to close a number of schools. We're going to have to close a number of school boards. We're going to have to see where people are going from rural Nova Scotia, either coming into Halifax or leaving the province entirely. Uh, you know, these yeah. are tough decisions that are going to have to be made. You can't, we can't keep this notion of rural Nova Scotia, rural Atlantic Canada, of small town with the school, the post office, and the church, and expect everything is going to stay the same for the next generation. Where there's nothing, and we said before, there's nothing for the youngins. They're moving away. They're going to community college. Well, you know, taking their welders course, as you said, Todd, waiting for a job to build a ship. Nothing's coming for a while. No. Going out west and staying out west. So, you know, we're going to see a lot of the, you know, whoever is going to be the next government, they're going to have to deal with a lot of these problems that are going to be coming up. Where the decrease enrollment, they're going to have to make the hard decisions to start closing the schools. And, and and realign uh, the resources to to where people are, are at in this province. First thing they need to do is get rid of the school boards. That's seven big piles of money that they can put into education. Because you know you've got a big giant building on the Halifax waterfront. You know they've got Class A property waterfront yeah. for our school board. They built, you know, and in Yarmouth, the Tri-County, as hard up as things are down there, they built this giant glistening glass building on the Yarmouth waterfront to house the school board that, you know, the UN would probably like to be in. So, you know, there's no, there's no ethics there. There's no, we shouldn't be doing this. We should be putting money into schools, you know, and then you have um, the high school in Spryfield. I can't think of the name right off. I forget. Sending mm -hmm. students to ask Dexter for money to fix a leaky roof. Like, yeah. who is running this place? Yeah. Anyway, I know it sounds like the hour of outrage, but uh, Oof. Uh, I guess I didn't have enough to drink tonight. It's not Friday. It's no, I know, day. I know. I, don't, I only had the two beer, and I really should need to uh, have another... Uh, Paul Addo on Twitter says the uh, breaking news: Dexter signs on to coach the Leafs. That. 
Oh, man. Uh, you got to like Twitter. I always get a good laugh. Twitter is wanna... the best. When, when, you, when you get the right hashtags to follow, once you figure out which hashtag, hashtags are the ones to follow, uh, they are... Um, Ah, oh, they're worth it. So anyway, um, Liberals uh, in Yarmouth wins in the landslide. And that's the one we've been talking about this all night, The uh, that's the riding with the ferry. And uh, all that money, last-minute money, to get a program in, does that do any good? Nope. Tim Biscat says, uh, was that an anti-Halifax rant by Jamie Bailey? I think it was. I'm not sure what he's referring to. Mm. Must have been his uh, speech up at the. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. There. Well, like I'm looking at the PCs right now. They're leading in what's really called mainland Nova Scotia and Cape Breton, Shetty Camp, you know that side of things, and uh, Lewisburg side of Cape Breton, and uh, Pupnico riding there. So I don't know. It's PCs are are leading where we would expect them to lead. Uh, the red wave is is leading right now. Really, I don't think anybody would have said the PCs are going to get into a majority government situation. So, yeah, uh, he's in a big riding, isn't he, Jamie Bailey? He saw the not a lot of people about Cape. No, though, yeah, big area, not a lot of people, right? Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, staying pretty steady, thirty-three, seven, and eleven. Yeah. So it hasn't changed in probably about an hour. No. Uh, Forty-five I'd minutes. Say, I'd say. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty much, uh, pretty much done. Yeah, they're really starting to pick up steam now. They're liberals elected in thirteen, PCs in four, and NDP in two. For it was kind of slow there for a while. Uh, Bobby uh, O'Keefe on Twitter says that that was quite a shot at McNeil by uh, Graham Steele. And uh, I'm sure Graham Steele is getting a little bit more looser in the lips as because uh, he's on CBC tonight. So I, I hope the story comes out why he resigned because uh, mm. I, 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 anyway, I'd be interested to know. Oh, no, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Like, he. He really keeps, he's been dropping hints. Like he's been on the radio, nine to five seven and CBC. He's been dropping just a, a few words to say that there's 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 definitely something. Todd, you're right on that. There's definitely something going on there. Well, I, as you know, Jim, I'm an overly suspicious person. Mm, indeed. But I, I said that immediately when he resigned. I said something's up. Yep. Well. I'd say that uh, our work here is done. Uh, we've been at it for an hour and a half. Uh, we're looking at the map. Let's take one last we've, look at the at the. We've election. been at it two hours, Jim. Oh, two hours. Holy yeah, man. we went on the air at eight thirty, buddy. Oh, shiza. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, Are let's you sure it was just two beers? Yeah. Well, I might have to go get another one. I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, current leader uh, board right now, and uh, I think it's pretty much as a, as a done deal as uh, how things are going to be. A lot of red, HRM, uh, which is the two little call-out screens at the bottom, that's where all the action is. Pretty much w only one, uh, two writings that's going to be red, uh, orange, everything else is red. Uh, if you look at uh, elected seats so far, uh, the, the Liberals are, are leading in that category. One NDP, few Conservatives. So, you know, it's pretty much a done deal right now as to uh, what the situation is going to be. People gave NDP uh, a chance. Maybe they were a little too harsh. Maybe they were expecting a little too much. But uh, it's going to be liberals who probably won't do too, too much to rock the boat for the first few years. Uh, PCs, they'll have a few, another four years to try to get their stuff together. So, does it surprise you guys? Didn't surprise me. 
Everybody that I, I heard talking and stuff, they were talking liberal. I'm not I'm surprised, surprised liberals now. I'm not surprised of a liberal majority. I'm just shocked at the, the severity. The dissent of the NDP? How, how many yeah. seats did the NDP lost? Yeah, I, I didn't think they lose as many, especially in the... No, they, they, they gain hang on they, to a few more in HRM. They, they probably will gain one out of it. And I didn't expect uh, Daryl Dexter to lose his seat. Mm. Yeah. To, to lose so resoundingly and to, yeah, the leader to lose your seat. That's, I guess I guess I should have said this up front, but I was kind of expecting a tight uh, fight between the NDP and Liberals, with uh, Liberals with a slight majority, maybe like 27 seats or something, and the NDP, the f official opposition. Um, obviously, I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I got right was that the uh, Liberals won, but... Anyway, that's why I'm not a paid pundit, I guess. Well, the thing with the the Cole Harbor Portland Valley writing, where the uh, Darrow Dexter is that the the vote difference is 31 votes. There's going to be an automatic recount, but even if it swings back to uh, Darrow's uh, way, is he going to stick around? Probably not. He's not going to stick around for this. He's going to move on to the next no, one. He'll, he'll be like the typical... Generally what happens is if he had a got in, he probably would have sat for maybe a year and then uh, resigned. Probably stepped down immediately as leader, have an interim leader, and then probably resign in one to two years. Yeah. Get out and run a, run a by-election. Uh, I almost think it's going to be a lot quicker than that. I am going to think it's going to be a lot quicker than that. Uh, somebody's now uh, on Twitter saying oh, that. Oh, I mean now, now this is a different situation. He'll probably resign immediately. Oh yeah, immediately. And, uh, start working uh, on those jobs. Yeah. So, so somebody on Twitter says here less than fifty percent voter turnout in HRM. You're kidding. How is that possible? Well, you know what, guys? Nobody deserves to bitch about anything. No, it's true. Except me, I'm allowed. And Jim, mm -hmm. and and Keith, <laughs> mm -hmm. and maybe Jocelyn. I don't know. What he well, he would have voted. He he's flying out. That's why he's not here tonight. Yeah, he's no, he's away. in Toronto. Doesn't doesn't count. He's in Ontario. So anyway, all right, uh, all right, boys. I think uh, that's enough for for tonight. I think it's pretty yeah. much uh, foregone just... con conclusion. Unless there's something else that came through the Twitter wire. Yeah, we're just beating a dead horse. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we can go and cry and laugh Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway, thank you, everybody. I know there's a few people who are watching tonight the uh, election coverage. I think we're pretty much uh, done. The decision desk says the Liberals in PC is going to run the show. Two NDP is going to, well, whatever. All right, uh, we're going to do our usual, our usual Friday night hangout. We're going to drink a little few more beers and not take ourselves so seriously. And uh, thanks a lot for everybody who's been watching. Thanks to Keith and uh, Todd for jumping in. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot, Jim. See you. Ouch. Bye.